Welcome, I'm Lori, and I want to thank you for joining us for our kids' message. The month of December, we are focusing on the anticipation of Christmas. You know, kids are waiting to open their presents, parents are waiting to finish shopping, and we're all waiting to spend some much needed time with the ones we love the most. With the busyness of the season, it's easy to forget why we celebrate in the first place. The first Christmas, God's people were waiting for a Savior. They were waiting for the Messiah to come, the Savior of the world. That's why we use Advent calendars. It's the daily reminder to focus on a God who loved us so much that He sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. This December, we're taking the whole month to celebrate Christmas and God's greatest gift to us, Jesus. It is crucial that while we shine a spotlight this month on the countdown to Christmas, that we remember why we have it in the first place. Our memory verse this month will be Luke 2, 11, that says today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is Messiah, the Lord. This Christmas, we'd love for you to take the next step and connect at least one time in person here at Northside. If you can do more, that's great. Our services are at 8, 9.30, and 11. Be sure also to make sure you attend small groups with Kids Ministry here at 9.30 or 11. We will have three Christmas Eve service opportunities, 11 a.m., 4 p.m., and 5.30 p.m. And we invite you to join us as we celebrate as a congregation here at Northside. We encourage you to continue to engage at home like you're doing now through this video and our Family Matters at northside.org website. At this website, you will find the materials that go along with the teaching sessions and age-specific activities. Perhaps another option for you would be to invite your friends over for a watch party or encourage your neighbors to join this conversation as well. The important thing is to connect. Connect with others and connect with God during this new season of life for each of us. Well, the moment you've been waiting on has arrived and it's time for our kids' message. So grab your Bible because here comes Pastor David. Can you imagine Two ordinary people, Mary and Joseph, living ordinary lives, living a life that was not really outstanding. They were growing up learning the scriptures. They were going about their everyday life just like they did the day before. Uh, think about it. Mary is just a young girl. She's an ordinary family member. She's an ordinary person. She has a heart for God though. And then you have Joseph. Joseph has a plan for his life and, and he knows what he's going to do. He's going to be a carpenter. I'm sure he's got great plans and great hopes and great expectations, but he's just an ordinary guy. Carpenters, that's a common profession. It's not unique. It's just about the same. They were engaged to be married. They were ready to start a family. They were ready to be a couple. Well, Mary found herself at the center of God's will which would, in fact, be a plan for all people for all time. We would basically decide to set our calendars and, and everything from the point of this interaction till now. <clears throat> we would see that, that Mary is going to have a baby and his name is going to be Jesus and we would then change our calendar from everything that was before him is called before Christ and everything that's after him is, is now, the common era. And, and I, I just wonder if, if we ever imagine the significance that she's just an ordinary girl. And now she finds herself in the center of a plan that is for all people for all times. So what would it have been like to have been Mary? To be an ordinary person living in an ordinary time, but an extraordinary thing happens to her. Well, that sounds a lot like what happens to us, but I want to set the story up because what happens to her is unique in that, that Mary is going through this ordinary life when all of a sudden an extraordinary thing happens and, 
and an angel appears to her. And I want to read for you in Luke chapter 1, verse 28. It says here, The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at the words and wondering what kind of greeting it might be. But the angel said, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you will give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him a throne of his father David, and his reign over all the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will never end. You see, Mary is put into the center of this 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 entire thing that's world altering, time altering. And Mary has, has, has got to be feel a lot overwhelmed. Mary goes and visits with her cousin Elizabeth. And in verse 46, the Bible says this. At that time, uh, sorry, 39. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried down the hill country of Judea, where she entered into Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby that was in her leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with joy of the Holy Spirit and exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why should the mother of my Lord come to me? You see, Elizabeth is Mary's cousin, and Mary went to see her cousin. And, and all of a sudden we see the significance of this is that... The, Jesus is going to be the Messiah. Jesus is the Messiah. And even inside of her, John the Baptist, who's, who's just another uh, ordinary person, all of a sudden leaps inside at the joy that he's coming. And Mary writes a song. And, and I think that's significant that she writes a song. She has so much inside her that she has to let it out. And here's what she says, and that's verse 46. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in my God, my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. For now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends for those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has performed mighty deeds with his arms. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but he has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things. He has sent the rich away empty. He has helped the servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and to his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. You know something? That's, that's so significant because Mary realizes her humble beginnings. And I, I want to take a break here now, but I want you to think about the significance of an ordinary person with an extraordinary God. Hey, Pastor Dave, what are you doing? Hey, what I'm doing is I'm getting some things that I'm going to give to Jesus this holiday season, like yeah. collecting food for the hungry yeah. and visiting shut-ins and reading the Bible through in a year. Cool. I want to give those as gifts to Jesus. Pastor Dave, I'll be right back. Oh, okay. What do you have? Oh, I um uh, did what they did in um, the Bible days. They uh, brought Jesus gifts. And they that's did what I did. Yes. Yeah, I did. And I did that too. See here, I got um, some uh, goldfish. Goldfish? Yep, some uh, franken skittios. franken skittios? Yes, franken, uh -huh. And some uh, marshmallows. Marshmallows? I don't think you're getting the whole point. Huh? Same gifts. Well, I encourage you to like and share the video that you're watching right now. And also, when you think about giving gifts to Jesus, I want you to think about giving him things that are meaningful to you. I know we were making fun of it with the, uh, with the goldfish, the franken skettios, and the marshmallows, but if you really wanna stop and think about things you can give to Jesus that are meaningful, I suggest that you talk to your parents about that and, and come up with things that, that you think can be something that you can give as a gift to Jesus. Well, let's get back to our story. And, and Mary has got this where she finds herself at the center of God's plan, but she's an ordinary person. I wonder sometimes, would the plan change if we were not willing to go along with the plan? It, it reminds me of the book of Esther where it talks about that it's for such a time as this when when Queen Esther is on the scene and she's saving the, the people of God because she meets with the king and she stops the plan that Haman has, I wonder 
What would happen? Because the Bible says that Mordecai looked at his niece and said, you know, you've been here for such a time as this, but if you choose not to, God will raise up a redeemer. And, and I wonder if maybe sometimes we are not at the place we need to be and God uses others. And that's not the case with Mary. Mary is a favored young lady and she ends up uh, being the mother of Jesus. And, and I'm just, I just can't imagine how her life changed at that time. But she realized that she was doing what God wanted her to do. It wasn't just because the angel talked to her. It wasn't just because her and Joseph had talked. It's because Mary had a relationship with God that, that was tried and it was true. And, and she had known from a child the, the word of God and she had hid it in her heart. I don't think that it was just a surprise to, to anybody as much as it was to Mary that God would choose her. We could choose to put God's plan ahead of what we want in our lives. That doesn't mean we don't get what we want, guys. It just means that we're going to choose to do what God wants us to do. Because being obedient to God sometimes is messy. Uh, my mind jumps immediately to working with folks that are homeless, um, working with people that are in prison. Y you know, it's not the best place, it's not the cleanest place, but it's exactly where God wants you to be. We could be part of God's big story when we follow His plan. And God has a plan for us. And, and you know, I just wanna, I just wanna really push a point here. God's not gonna love us more because we follow the plan or love us less because we don't follow the plan. But the ability that we have to be used in the God plan for our lives is gonna hinge on our obedience. I don't, I don't think that that's a secret. You're not going to hear from God when you're out of His will. You're not going to be able to know what God wants to do in your life when you're not listening to Him, when you're not seeking Him, when you're not with God's people in church, when you're not reading the Bible, when you're not praying, when you're not telling others about Him. How is God going to just jump in and miraculously make you obedient? No! What's going to happen is, is you're going to become obedient over time with the small things, bigger things, and then God's going to give you the big things to be able to be obedient to that. It's not something that happens overnight. It's something that happens as a progression. So you can have joy because God has a plan for you. That's right. He's got a plan just for you. And I'm thinking about these two verses. Number one, um, you, need to take, you need to take a step and say, you know, I want to become a child of God. I want to to admit your sinner, believe Jesus died on the cross for your sin and confess and commit your life to him. Repent from the sin that you've done. I mean, the way we live our lives is a selfish way and we need to have a, a way that God, we can move forward and, and be part of God's plan. But the second thing is, is to be obedient to God in everything you do. I don't know whether for you being obedient means that you need to take the next step of baptism or maybe you need to take the next step to, to make sure that you're being obedient to your parents or take the next step and, and be back at church. I don't know exactly what the next step for you is, but I know that the Holy Spirit of God will work in your life. So to me, that, that, that's kind of exactly what God wants from us. God wants us to be obedient. Mary understood that there was a plan and a purpose and we can have a plan and we can have a purpose. There's no need for us to be depressed. There's a plan that God has for us. There's no need for us to be down. There's a plan that God has for us and we can know what he wants for us. Mary found herself at the center of God's plan that would be for all times and for all people. That is just so significant. The part of the picture that Mary played was to be the avenue that God would bring his son into the world. And, and I wonder sometimes, you know, have we really have we really explored just exactly what kind of obedience that took? She gave up so many things. Kids, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying that I know as an adult, I think more in terms of, of protecting and what she wanted. But, you know, I'll bet that if Mary had a choice, she would have had that baby close to her parents so that other people could help her take care of that baby. Instead, she has the baby in a stall. I mean, she would want to be surrounded by family and friends, and instead she's kind of out back. The whole world's going on around, and, and she's in, in a, a stall for, for animals. Well, you can have joy, not because things go your way, but because you know that God has a plan for your life. And, and I want to encourage you to seek that plan. I want you to prioritize that plan. I want you to, to go after that plan, because if you go after that plan, God will be faithful. 
He will let you know what that plan is. I know that some of you out there are probably struggling with how does this all work together? How does God have a plan for me? But I'm guaranteeing you that he does. He loves you very much. He will never leave you nor forsake you. That's what the Bible says. We can trust him. So I want you to pray with me right now. We're going to pray that God reveals his plan for us. But then also, after I'm done praying, there's going to be some questions on the screen that I encourage you as a family to look at. We'd love to see you in church this Sunday. I love you guys. Pray with me. Father in heaven, I just want to come before you and say thank you for the kids that watch. I pray for their families and for them that you will help them discover the plan that you have for their life. I pray, Lord, that as they are seeking you, that you would reveal yourself to them. And now, Lord, as we get ready to get to the Christmas season, help us to focus on the real reason for Christmas. Help us to, to keep at the, the front of our minds the fact that you gave the greatest gift of all, your son, to die for us. And that we can accept his free gift of salvation. We ask this in your precious and holy name, Jesus. Amen. Thanks, guys.